So today's project is this little knob is all freaking janked up. So it doesn't go all the way to the cold position. It doesn't go all the way to the hot position. And the whole thing is my fault. So to, to pull this gauge cluster or this cluster out, you're supposed to run this all the way to the, to the off position. And then there's a cable buried down underneath here they pull off well when the last stereo was installed which was by me I forgot that I tried to get it apart and I ended up taking this mech apart inside the uh, the cluster so it's been broken for years now um, but what we're gonna do today is we're gonna fix that but while we're there we're going to uh, sneak in that little bad boy that I've had set aside for another project, swap out the wife's stereo. I'm not going to tell her about this. It's going to be a surprise. Alright. First thing we're going to do is get this cover off. I can't remember how to get this cover off. It's buried in there. That's right, pull the faceplate off. It works a lot better. So once you get the faceplate off, it's a matter of dropping the tools inside. That comes right on out. There we go. We are out enough. Ford makes a fancy tool pulling this apart. I don't have it though. So essentially, you just need two hard objects on either side. Fill in these little holes and then you just pry on it a little bit. They've been using this system for a really long time. Side loose. Oh, the second one. There it goes. That's loose. Let's go down underneath. Pop this cover loose. All these plugs are just the regular lift style plugs. Just like everything else has. 
the Ford. So yeah, this thing has a kind of like a lock position when you're lining all this up. So now we get to take apart this Mac, get the dial flipped around. There we go. So that's still locked in. Get that one pointed the right spot. Okay. That's good. All right. Yeah. Feed this unit back in enough and double check that position. is all the way max all the way off is all the way off cool all right so now bigger task at hand hopefully the cages are the same oh yes this one some extra features on it. It has a, has a rear USB that you can re remote locate in a glove box. And it has a mic. Oh, yes. Now I remember why I got this one. So I could do hands-free. The car it's going into, you can't do hands-free. It's going to be way, way too loud. So, I think we're going to sneak all this into into here. All right. And the cages are different. Well, I guess I guess swap the cage. Okay, not the end of the world.
debating where I want the USB to come out. And I should probably string the mic before I get too much further here. Alright, so for the mic, I'm going to stick it right up in here, so it'll be close to the driver. And then uh, we're going to hide the wire back behind this cover here. Then somehow sneak it all the way over to the stereo. Let me string the mic oh, wire real quick. That's pretty well right where it needs to be. Just got to get it attached somehow. Oh. Pull it back for just a moment. It really needs that sticky on the other side of the clip. Wire tucked out of the way. All right. Access cover on the side over here. Access to the edge of the dash. All right. Now we just gotta get over up to this point. Just need to get it snaked up into position for the back side here. Okay, microphone installed. Get this cover off to the side, back in position. Oops, if you put the cover in the right way. And this is the, the little side cover. It just goes in, tucks underneath the, the uh, gasket. Three little clips. Lock them all in position. Okay, we're going to take a moment to cable manage just a tiny bit because this is really longer than it needs to be. So we'll just take this little twist tie that it came with. That's ready to go back in. Ready to go in, ready to go in. Okay. Right, that cable is going to be a bear to get in position, too.
There it got a hold of it. We can, we can install now. Okay. This one has all the plugs mirrored from the old one. That's not very convenient. Those are just too short by a hair. Let me pull the carpet back. Get a little bit more slack on them. All right, we're getting a little more involved here. Give me a way to make some more slack. Pretty sure I did this all those many years ago. Ran it down this pinch well. All that effort. Plug. Got these things in. There, right. stereo is in. Get my wiring all put back in place. Zip ties hold that mic wire out of the way. All right. That is that. Put the beauty ring on. That's a snug fit on that one. There it is. Tuck that into the side right here. Oh. 
Well, let's see if I totally butchered the wife's car. All right, so here I'm uh, just getting it off of demo mode, and then um, Kenwood does a really nice thing that they've been doing for probably 15, 20 years now, uh, where they set up uh, speaker presets, and it'll change your baseline EQ uh, based on what type of speakers you actually have inside the car. Uh, I found that overall it makes a, just a much better sound. But it's, uh, the interface is pretty easy. You just do it from standby mode, and then you just roll it around and select the, the speakers that you have. Um, but yeah, that's kept me coming back for I don't know how many years now with, to working with them. So now the hard part is I gotta figure out how to change the uh, display because that's gonna drive me nuts having it cycle like that. But it appears uh, everything's working fine. I'll try a uh, USB. That one seems to be working just fine. So, I guess that's pretty much a video there. I'll clean up my mess and uh, get the car out before the wife notices.